Today, I'm gonna walk you guys through workouts and talk a little bit about my new training plan for September. Ah, oh my God. Welcome back to my channel. Today is client check-in day, so I am I just get out of my office. Sometimes I like to sit here and talk chain of scenery. So happy because the women in my program are just doing so amazing, and it's always awesome to see their results. If you guys wanna see more of the behind the scenes of my training, my nutrition, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this content with a friend. And also comment below, let me know what else you guys wanna see more of. So I'm having my pre-workout meals. If you guys watch, last week's video about my reverse diets. Calories are still not so high. <laughs> we are aiming to get them higher right now, but my pre-workout meal is usually much, much larger than this. I'm doing some air fryer pod from Trifecta, rice from Trifecta, and then also just a little bit of veggies that I had left over from last night. I topped it off with this kind of a spicy, chunky salsa from Trader Joe's. When I put toppings on, especially when I'm trying to keep calories tight, I always look at the label and make sure the portion size and like you're getting the most flavor bang for your buck. So this particular salsa is just 10 calories for two tablespoons. So I did about four tablespoons, which is a fourth of a cup. Right on top, it's got a nice spice to it, lots of flavor, and it just really dresses up the meal. So this is my pre-workout meal. And then I'm also doing a cold brew with a little bit of chocolate almond milk that is made at this local juice shop that I like to go to. My pre-workout most days is espresso. If you guys follow me on social media, you see coffee is life. I love coffee. If you are looking for a pre-workout, there's a ton of pre-workout supplements out there. Some are designed for focus, some to get more pump, some are designed to give you more energy. Usually it's a combination of two of those three. But for me, sometimes the pre-workouts just make me too jittery or I feel good right now, just need a little bump. And sometimes some of the pre-workouts just overdo it for me. So I find that straight espresso, straight caffeine is gonna get me just that little burst of energy that I need for my workout. Out. So a lot of times I either go to this local coffee shop and get two to four <laughs> shots of espresso, or this is a cold brew that I got off Amazon and I like to just have that right before I train and I'm good to go. I always get that question, is caffeine bad for you? And absolutely not. It's so good for stimulating your metabolism, getting you that extra boost. A lot of times I get really, really awesome workouts just from a little bit of espresso, so a little bit of caffeine and good to go. So I'm gonna finish up a couple of client check-ins right now and then I'll take you guys to the gym with me and and I'll show you what we're doing for the workout. All right, we made it to the gym. I actually got caught up on some client work. Sometimes that happens. So we're finally here at the gym. It's right around four o'clock, a little bit later in the day than I like to train, but I'm committed to getting it done. Today is posterior training day. Posterior is basically your backside. So we're gonna be doing delts, a little bit of back, a little bit of glutes, a little bit of hamstring and calves. So I'm basically doing one or two exercises for each one of those body parts. I do have dedicated days for glutes and hamstrings and back and delts, but this day I'm just kind of lightly touching everything. So if you watched my last video where I discussed my reverse diet and my nutrition right now, I'm still on the lower calorie side or kind of moderate calories, right around 1600. And so I'm taking my reverse diet nice and slow. Same thing with my training. I'm basically training about four days a week right now and just kind of testing the waters with my strength and making sure everything feels good. I am about to turn 40 here soon, and I'm really being mindful of my recovery time and being mindful of joints and ligaments and that everything just feels good before I get back into really heavy training. Training heavy is relative to the individual. What's hard for me might not be hard for you or vice versa, so something to keep in mind. What we're doing right now is we're gonna start with a reverse fly, which is to hit the rear delts. I am gonna be using this cable system. This is also a great alternative if you have a gym that doesn't have like a pec deck fly where you're doing this motion. This is a great alternative that you can do if you have like the dual system. You could also do the same move on this machine as well to hit the rear delts. We're gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna do a set of about 12 to 15 and go from there. So with this exercise, again, we're working this muscle here. This is the rear delts. And it's really important, a lot of people shrug when they do this. So when you perform this exercise, make sure that you are contracting, keeping this down. 
while you're performing the movement, don't shrug upward. And then also this is a really small muscle group, so you don't need to be going super heavy. You can even see I'm just using literally one plate. This is five kilograms, about 11 pounds. If that is still too hard for you, which it could be, you can always default to dumbbells and literally just do the same motion. Just hinge over and lifting the arms like this with dumbbells and you can use five, six pounds, eight pounds, and then work your way up until you can use the machine. Every machine is different, so you just have to try it out to see if it works. Okay, so second exercise, we're gonna do narrow close grip pull-ups. I usually do wide grip pull-ups. I'm actually stronger on wide grip pull-ups because my back is stronger than my biceps. When you do the wide grip, a lot of it is just all isolation of your lats. When you bring your hands in like this, or even like this, you also now bring in your biceps as a secondary muscle. For a lot of people, that's it's helpful for me it's not because my biceps aren't that strong but I am trying to work more of my rhomboids and a little more like a mid back so I like to do more back work these days that's more narrow grip pretty much in everything the other thing a lot of women especially who are in their 40s and 50s have a strength goal of being able to do pull-ups the number one thing that I see when women attempt to do pull-ups is they're kind of like this pulling and almost like their chins down. What you wanna do is really almost exaggerate your posture. Get your rib cage up like this. Instead of being here, you're here. And that puts you in a position to really utilize your lats a little bit better. And I almost think about bringing my sternum to the ceiling. So really keep your, almost like an arch to your back. So I'll show you guys how that's done. That puts you in a position to really utilize the big back muscles versus when you're here, you are really relying a lot more on your shoulders and putting a lot of stress and tension on your arms that your arms could never lift your entire body. I'm 150 pounds. No way that my arms could lift just that weight. I am also going to aim for about six to eight reps and progress from there. I haven't done these in probably well over a month. So this is where my strength is. This is like my big strength move for this workout. And everything else, I'll probably stay in like the 10 to 15 rep range. for not doing those in a month. That was way easier than I thought. <laughs> I probably should have been for more. I'm gonna stop there because I am gonna do four sets of these and my strength will decrease the further I go. But it'll be a goal of mine going into this next phase to get up to doing 10 or sets of 10 or more on these. Body weight, it's 100% something any woman can do. If this is your goal to be able to do pull-ups, I would do them at least at minimum four times a week. Start your workout, even if it's leg day. Do a couple sets of these, two reps, three reps, whatever you can do, and then just stay consistent. Keep practicing them every single workout. If you're consistent with that, six to eight weeks, you'll be able to do pull-ups, no problem. Okay, so third exercise for today is gonna be a seated row. Again, close grip, because I am trying to focus more on that mid-back, but keeping everything narrow. Anytime you do anything wide, wide like this, or wide like this, you're gonna be working the lats and creating width. And any time that you are pulling close like that, you're gonna be getting a little bit more mid-back and also working a little bit more on density rather than width. Something that's been really hard for me over the years is I've built that width and I don't need to do that anymore, especially for my aesthetic goals. I'm pretty much there. If you want to build more of that V taper shape, you still wanna incorporate those wide grip exercises. But if you wanna work a little bit more on density and filling in more of that mid-back area, close is the way to go. And again, on these, I'm gonna aim for about 12, reps, nice big stretch here, and pull low. And really keep the elbows in tight. Keep them from flaring. Something else that's really important when you're performing this and also a lot of other exercises, people rush through the rep. So instead of focusing so much on like pulling, really milking the eccentric. So when I'm stretching, you'll notice I actually go slower 
as I get more stretched, spending more time in that lengthened position, even pausing and then pulling. It's going to force the muscles to work a little bit harder and you're gonna get better muscle fiber recruitment and then ultimately better hypertrophy, better muscle building. So you don't wanna rush the eccentric. Very different than like a CrossFit or a powerlifting style of training where everything's very explosive and everything's so much more on the contraction. Whereas with bodybuilding, sculpting the body, both sides are important. The contraction and also the eccentric, the stretching motion. I would even say for most exercises, that eccentric is probably even more important. Build size. I'm also gonna switch this here. I'm gonna actually do an underhand grip on this one. I think I'm gonna feel it just a little bit more. All right, we are gonna move on to the lower part of the body, the posteriors, glutes, hamstrings, and calves. First exercise here is gonna be single leg standing hamstring curl. I love this machine. I'm just gonna basically go back and forth between each leg. So while one leg gets a break, the other leg's gonna be working. And then I'm just gonna keep going until I do three sets on each side, aiming for about 10 to 12 reps. Going moderately heavy, again, really focusing on that contraction and then a nice slow eccentric, so lowering down slow. This is my weaker hamstring. I think my glute on this side is stronger, but the hamstring is weaker. So when you're doing unilateral, so single leg moves, always start with the weaker side. So I'm starting with this side and then I'll map the other side to it. This feels significantly harder for me than on the left side. Hamstrings are pretty fatigued now after doing that. We're gonna go right into a B stance barbell RDL. So B stance is essentially another way to do a single leg, but also like you have this sort of tripod thing going on where it helps you with balance versus doing just a single leg floating. So you're still able to go pretty heavy on these. I love doing unilateral movements as well, just to work on those imbalances. I definitely have like a hamstring that's weaker than the other, a glute that's weaker than the other. So it's a great way to just work on those imbalances, both from strength perspective and also from an aesthetic perspective. I can see some variances in my progress photos where one side's a little bigger than the other. So just something to work on. B stance or also maybe known as staggered stance. It's called a B stance because you're kind of making a B with your leg. So you keep the foot. I like to keep it kind of right in the middle of my other foot like that. And you're just kind of lightly holding the toe here. It's really just for balance. Again, I'm going to start with this weaker side. The form here is the same with a regular RDL. You wanna be shifting the hips back as far as possible. Keep the bar close to your body, pause, and then squeeze the glute and ham to come up. And again, really slow on that eccentric. So it's nice and slow, slower as you approach the floor. Squeeze the glutes to stand up.
am intentionally using a switch grip on this to help with my grip strength. I don't have my lifting straps on me right now, but if I did, I would prefer to use those because they help take your forearms out of it and also you don't have to worry so much about your grip strength, basically. My goal is to work my backside not strengthen my forearms. So if your goal is to improve your grip strength or strengthen your forearms, don't use wrist straps. But if you're not concerned about that and you're going this heavy, you wanna use lifting straps. I use VersaGrip, so it's my preferred brand to use. And if you don't have that, like me right now, I use an, a switch grip here just to help offset that a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do our next set here. Shifting the hips far back, pause, come up. heart rate up. All right, those these stance RDLs kicked my ass. I'm pretty winded after that. The great thing about RDLs is they are intended to be a full posterior chain exercise. The strength coach that developed that exercise or that initiate started that exercise, the intention was to strengthen your entire backside. So your back, your glutes, your hamstrings, even your calves. So if you were doing RDLs and you feel it in any of those areas, you're doing them right. And usually the weaker part of your body will feel it first because it needs to catch up to the other parts. So my glutes can actually handle quite a bit on those but my low back does start to get tired after a while kind of a constant progression trying to get stronger we're now going to finish up with some seated calf raises the weakest part of my body one of the best ways to grow the calves is actually to do them from like a hinged position versus standing or even like the seated so this is my first choice i don't sit back like this i actually lean forward a little bit more and then i try to roll up on the ball of my my toe versus coming out like that to really get this and are part of the calf muscle. Same thing here, as I mentioned with the other exercises, you wanna get as much length stretched at the bottom as possible, and then roll up onto that toe, get a nice hard contraction at the top, and then control on the way down, stretching as far as you can. And I'm keeping my legs mostly straight here. So no bends to the knee. When you bend the knees, you get a little more soleus, this outer part. We don't want that today. And I'm aiming for sets of 10 to 15 here. Definitely the weakest part of my, no, second weakest part. The weakest part of my body is probably my triceps, not areas of focus for me. Three fats, two <laughs> Yes. Grace. Hi, Gracie. Yes. We love doggies. She's thick, she oh yeah, she just looks good. Thick. Yeah. <laughs> that alone was worth coming today. <laughs> I'd rather do squats. <laughs> ah. Oh my God, thank God was the, was the last set. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this workout and got some valuable tips from it, little nuggets to incorporate into your training. If you guys like this video, if you wanna see more like this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with a friend. And comment below what else you guys wanna see. We have new videos coming out every Saturday and Monday on my channel. Look forward to providing more content for you guys.